brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is the second Sunday in the season of Advent, and today God reminds us that when the Lord comes, he humbles his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. May you have grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text today is recorded in Malachi chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Look, I'm sending my messenger. He will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord whom you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight will surely come, says the Lord of armies. But who can endure the day when he comes? Who will remain standing when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire, like launderer's bleach. He will be seated like a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and like silver. They will belong to the Lord and bring him an offering in righteousness. Judah and Jerusalem's offerings will be pleasing to the Lord, as they were in the days of old, in years long ago. I will approach you to judge you. I will be quick to give testimony against those who practice occult arts, those who commit adultery, those who swear false oaths, those who cheat workers out of their wages, those who wrong a widow and a fatherless child, those who turn away a resident alien, all those who do not fear me, says the Lord of armies. Certainly I, the Lord, do not change. That is why you, sons of Jacob, have not come to an end. Since the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of armies. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Advent King, we ask you to continue to have mercy on your children. Please help us to listen to the Advent message, and may we become messengers ourselves. Amen. May you have grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The day of the Lord is a common phrase in the Bible, a phrase that describes the day when the Lord will return to our world once again. On that day, Jesus will come and judge all people. He will throw the wicked out of his sight forever, and he will gather his believers to himself in heaven. The prophet Malachi asks, who can endure the day when he comes? Who will remain standing when he appears? Those are very valid questions, especially when we realize that the Lord is holy and all-powerful. Nothing imperfect can stand in his presence, which doesn't leave much hope for sinful mankind. But the great comfort found in the Bible is that God himself has been at work to prepare us for that awesome day, to purify us from our sins, and to present us to himself as sinless and holy. In fact, God is still working in our lives, so we will be able to stand before his throne completely accepted. In our text for today, the prophet Malachi tells us that the Lord would send two messengers to us, John the Baptist and Jesus, messengers who would prepare us for the day of the Lord. Malachi was the last of God's Old Testament prophets. He preached about 400 years before the birth of Jesus. Through Malachi, God announced to the nation of Israel that the Savior whom he had promised was coming. But before he would arrive, someone else was coming too. Malachi wrote, Look, I am sending my messenger. He will prepare the way before me. The Lord promised to send a messenger who would preach his word to the people and who would get them ready to receive the Lord himself. We know from the New Testament scriptures that this messenger is John the Baptist. Jesus himself said about John, This is the one about whom it is written, Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. John was a very important character. Luke tells us in his gospel, he, that is John, 
went into the whole region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John preached the harsh message of God's law in order to lead them to repent of their sins, to turn away from them. But John also preached the comforting message of the gospel, so the people would know that God is gracious and that he would forgive their sins through the waters of baptism. This was the message John had received from God, and it had great power, the power to work repentance in the people and to wash away their sins. This is how he would prepare the people for the arrival of the Lord. Today, our God continues to use the message of John the Baptist to work in our hearts, to prepare us for the day of the Lord. Even though John himself has been dead for nearly 2,000 years, his message of a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins still lives on. In his sermon to the crowd of people who had gathered on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached the very same message. He told the people, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And of course, this is the faithful message that, that pastors still proclaim today. God wants us to turn away from our sins, to get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, to renounce the devil and his wicked ways. It's hard, hard for us not to, to love the world and the things of this world. But when we focus on our baptism, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're constantly reminded that we have been redeemed by Jesus. Baptism saves. As Luther said, baptism works forgiveness of sins, delivers from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. Thank God for his messenger, John the Baptist, and for the gift of our baptism. May we continue to drown the old Adam in us, along with its evil deeds and desires, by daily contrition and repentance, so the new man in us can live in righteousness and purity, prepared for the Savior's arrival on the day of the Lord. But the prophet Malachi also gave his people the prophecy of a second messenger, a messenger who was even more important than John the Baptist. He would be the messenger of the covenant. Malachi prophesied, Then suddenly the Lord whom you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight will surely come, says the Lord of armies. God's Old Testament people were anxiously waiting for the Lord to come. They knew that he would establish a covenant where God would forgive their sins and remember them no more. Isn't it interesting that after the Jews had waited for so many years for this Messiah to come, suddenly there he was. Jesus came to his temple, to his people, and he, became, he came as the messenger of the covenant. But the message of Jesus wasn't only a spoken message. It was a message that he fulfilled. By his innocent life and sinless death, Jesus established a new covenant between God and all sinners, a covenant in which God forgives our sins for the sake of Jesus. Jesus continues to come to his people, his believing followers. He comes to us in baptism and brings us into God's loving family. He comes to us in his word as he speaks a message of God's grace and eternal truth. And he comes to us in his holy supper, bringing us his own body and blood, the same body that was offered as a sacrifice, and the same blood that was poured out for us on the cross. Through these means of grace, Jesus continually renews his covenant with us and guarantees the blessing of forgiveness. But Malachi continues, Who can endure the day when he comes? Who will remain standing when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire, like launderer's bleach. He will be seated like a refiner and a purifier of silver. 
He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and like silver. The day the prophet is talking about is the last day, the second coming of Jesus. Fire and bleach are both powerful cleansing agents. A refiner's fire burns away all the impurities, and a launderer's bleach attacks dirt and stains. Jesus is like both of them. He's not weak, he's not lukewarm, and he's not tolerant of sin. Jesus is 100% pure, and he purifies us from all our sins. Malachi didn't like what he saw in the people of his day. The people brought blemished animals to the priest, animals that were blind and lame and sick, trying to get by with as little as they possibly could. And the priests offered those animals as sacrifices to God. With those imperfect sacrifices, they were robbing God of the, the tithes and the offerings that he had demanded and which he deserved. Many of them had divorced their godly wives and had married women who worshipped false gods. They constantly complained that God favored the wicked and that he failed to reward the people whom they saw as good. But are we any better? Just like the people of Malachi's day, we can be half-hearted in our worship and devotion to the Lord. Our love can be lukewarm, and our desire to study his word and serve him in humble obedience often falls short. We say things we shouldn't. We pollute our minds with sinful desires. And then we get upset with God because it seems like he's letting the wicked in the world get away with all their godless actions. Just like those people in Malachi's day, we fail to recognize that we are just as wicked as everyone else. If the Lord kept a record of our sins, we couldn't stand on the last day either. We need to be washed clean and purified of sin, and the only one who can do that is Jesus. Malachi wrote, He will be seated like a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and like silver. That's what Jesus does for us. Through his word, Jesus brings to the surface all of our selfish motives and our pride. And then he destroys them. Jesus reveals the inconsistency in our lives, the exceptions that we want to make to, to justify our sinful words and actions, and he destroys them too. At the same time, Jesus pours his loving forgiveness into our hearts. He molds and shapes us to become more and more like him in righteousness and holiness. Whenever the Lord puts our faith to the test and makes us go through fiery ordeals, it's not pleasant for us. But Jesus uses those tests to refine our faith so that the proven character of your faith, which is more valuable than gold, which passes away, even though it's tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. The cleansing and refining work of Jesus has a wonderful purpose. It prepares us for the day of the Lord. As God works through his word, he firmly establishes our faith in Jesus and he guarantees that he will fulfill this promise to us. He says, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flame will not set you on fire, because I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God's work in our lives is truly beautiful. Through the message of John the Baptist, he prepares the way for the Lord to come to us. And through the message and work of Jesus, he purifies us from all unrighteousness and refines us to be his people. When he returns again on the day of the Lord, we will be able to stand before him completely accepted, with hearts that are grateful for his free gift of salvation. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray.
Dear Father, we thank you for preparing the kingdom of heaven for us through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, and for making us members of that kingdom through faith in him. What joy, what hope, what peace is ours through Jesus. We know that for his sake you now rule us with your grace, forgiving all our sins, and that you will give us everlasting life in heaven. We are no longer held in the bondage of fear and the power of sin, but trusting in your Son, we are able to live victoriously over sin to the glory of your name. O Holy Spirit, continue to work in us that we never lose our hold on everlasting life. Led by you, instead of our sinful flesh, may we always seek first the kingdom of heaven, putting your word and the promise of everlasting life it brings ahead of everything else. Grant us your grace so that we never fall away from our faith or fail to worship you or tire of serving you with loving obedience. Strengthen our ability to resist sin. Lead us, to continu lead us continually into your word, giving us a desire to hear it preached as well as a love for reading and studying it in our homes. Impress the truths of your word on our minds and hearts, and also give us a hunger and thirst for the Lord's Supper. Enable us to receive it frequently for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.